How cute are embroidery scissors? Who knew? Hi, I'm Tiffany. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am really excited to share some of my art projects with you. I normally work in watercolor, but I have just started working in embroidery. Today, I'd like to show you my first ever embroidery hoop. This is an Australian hopping mouse with some Geraldton wax flowers. I learned a lot of lessons along the way while making this, and I'm excited to share them with you. So I started with a watercolor that I made of the Hopping Mouse and the Geraldton wax. I'm using a 10 inch hoop and also some embroidery linen. I gave the fabric a bit of a wash and I ironed it. I placed it on the inside of my hoop, put the outside down, made sure it was pulled really, really tight so that the surface is taut, like tight, like a drum. I made sure that I didn't distort the warp and the weft when I pulled it. I placed my hoop on top of my watercolor sketch and I used a temporary fabric pen that disappears after a couple of days to trace the silhouette of the mouse and also some of the details so that I know where I need to change color. Before this project, I didn't know these fabric pens existed. They are amazing. I can think of so many sewing projects I would have used it for before if I had known about it. You should get one. <laughs> I used some DMC embroidery floss, although if you were making this, you could also just use some regular sewing thread. I used a caramel thread for my base color for the mouse, a fawn for the highlights and gold for the shadows. I have a dark brown for the spots in the coat. I have a dark and light pink for the ears, limbs and tail, black and white for the eye, multicolored green and standard green for the greenery. For the flowers, I used a mix of normal floss in pinks and this DMC pearl cotton thread, orange, peach, pink, and purple. So now it's time to get stitching. I started from the tip of the nose and I worked my way down the body, choosing the different colors as I went right down to the tip of the tail. For most of the body, I would use two strands of thread together, but for places where I want a bit more of a 3D kind of effect, for the ridge of the ear, I use three strands, sometimes even four, to make it thicker so that it would stand out more. In the bowl of the ear, I used one just single thread, so it would be quite a low layer. I really had to think about the direction of the fur, and how it would meet in different places, such as the shoulder. And also distinguish between the front arm and the back arm and the front leg and the back leg. Once I had done the body of the mouse, it was time to do the best part, the fluffy tail. For this, I used a stitch called Turkey Stitch, otherwise known as Turkey Work. I will be making a mini tutorial to show you exactly how I got this fluffy effect. Yeah. After my little mouse was done, it was time to move on to the flowers. For the flowers, I would start with the centers. Now first, I tried to just pack the threads one on top of the other to create some kind of bobble 3D dimension. But I found that because this thread is really, really thick, and also I was putting knots in the back, it was really hard to get my thread back through the frame. I don't recommend doing that. So I tried another way. I just made a little French knot. For the petals themselves, 
I just used something I think is called Satin Stitch. Although this was my first embroidery project, I found that along the way I actually had to learn quite a few stitches and I was really surprised by actually how easy they are. So I'm gonna make a bunch of mini tutorials to show you exactly how I did them and they will be in the description below. I used a chain stitch for the stems, working in my multicolor thread, adding some of that just regular green into it when the multicolor got a bit hectic and I needed a bit more control. So this was a really fun project and I think a nice one to start off with. I love his little tail. I've got more projects in the works and also some of the mini tutorials that I mentioned before. So if you did enjoy this video, please consider subscribing. If you do have any tips for me, any advice, any more things that I could work on or try, please leave me a comment. See you in the next video.